Hello. In this video, we will look into control and learning. Essentially, we will be looking into how learning based frameworks can be used for control applications. Learning based framework as in uh, AIML methods, machine learning methods to, to be very specific. Um, in order to understand that, I will be covering again uh, some idea about what the dynamical system is and non-dynamical system is and how the learning methods have been evolved for non-dynamical systems and how we can apply it for dynamical system for the control purposes. All right. Let us begin by understanding the dynamical system. Some part of that has been uh, initially uh, addressed in few uh, some part of has been addressed in um, we have already addressed dynamical system or non-dynamical system in the earlier video but let us revise this for the sake of completion here. In by definition the system where a function describes the time dependence of a point in a geometrical, in the, in a geometrical space is called dynamical system. In essence, we will be looking into the dynamical systems for which the state of the system depends upon its initial state and, and how it has evolved to a particular time instance. Not only the initial state, but how the trajectory has evolved to reach to that particular time instance. So, at a part, so the state will be dependent on the time as well as the initial state from where it has started from rest. We can take some examples here. For example, it is a solar system, the distance to the um, to the plant, the, uh, the distance of the planet to sun is just not enough, but also it depends upon the time um, at which uh, this particular state, the, so the state of the solar system is to be considered. Similarly, weather patterns which is ever evolving and, and changing. The stock market is a very large system where many many different parameters or variables to be considered to understand what the market is and how the market has evolved from a particular time instant to this particular time instance. It in as I mentioned the dynamical system has a characteristics which evolves and exhibit behaviors dependent on the initial conditions. It also we, we also characterize the dynamical, uh, dynamical systems with the help of differential equations by, by showing the changes over time. So, for example, we have inverted pendulum shown here. So, inverted pendulum as in it is pivoted at, at the bottom and uh, pendulum is inverted and it is in up, its equilibrium is or uh, uh, what we, we want is that this particular pendulum should stay in the upright position. But what happens is little bit of disturbance into it. If you have applied small force, it will come down and settle over here. In any case, when uh, when we have uh, uh, whatever is the condition of this particular pendulum at a particular time can be described by this uh, differential equation given here, which is given by the second derivative of theta. Uh, with respect to time equals g by l sin theta, where theta is the angle of the pendulum with respect to the vertical axis and l is the arm, the length of the arm. So, we can see that uh, we cannot simply say that the position of this, this, particular in, uh, this particular pendulum which is given by theta, angular position theta is just not being given based on what is the length of the uh, arm and the gravity component g, but also it depends upon from where it has started. So, depending upon from where it has started, this particular uh, solution of this derivative, this differential equation is going to be, uh, be giving the state of the or uh, state or the angular position of this particular inverted pendulum. All right. Let us consider non-dynamical systems as against the dynamical systems. We will say that it, okay, these systems do not exhibit changes in state over time. So, whatever is the input applied, we have 
a certain relationship which describes what should be the output. Depending upon uh, the, so in a sense the output depends only on the inputs being applied and it does not change with respect to time. We can give certain examples such that uh, such as the static forces on a bridge. So we have this um, uh, uh, infrastructural bridges or infrastructures, um, civil bridges, civil infrastructures where we calculate its static forces and depending upon its structure is being designed. Similarly, shape and sizes of the mountain ranges. They are not changing with time. Of course, they change over, a small change happens over the period of uh, say 1000 years or whatnot. So at least for my life time, I would say that okay, shape of the mountain ranges is fixed because its changes are very, very small with respect to time. And that's the reason I can always consider that it's a static system for this particular duration of time. Something similar, even we do it with the dynamical systems too, we can always consider within the particular sample time it is, uh, it is uh, not changing. But that is when we are solving that particular dynamical equation. Here in the static case, we will say that okay, it is for particular time instance, the entire time period of the, uh, of the assessment, it is completely static, right? There, there's no time concept in, in when I'm describing the output of that system. Similarly, circuits with no current flow can be considered for, uh, considered under static uh, systems. They are, as I said, they, they are characterized by static, static or equilibrium systems and they remain unchanged over time. Let's take this example of strain gauge. The strain gauge uh, is a sensor measure, sensor which, uh, which gives the change in the resistance at the output lids based on the strain applied on this. So these are being typically used on a metal pipes or the bridges or, or civil infrastructures such that even if there is some compression or, or expansion of that particular uh, uh, structure, you will be able to, they are very sensitive, they will be able to gauge the changes in the resistance over there and the change in the resistance is then captured through some circuit and so on. What as a system engineer we are, uh, we are interested in that what is the output input output relationship. So the output is the resistance which depends upon the length of the strain gauge and the cross sectional area of the strain gauge. There could be resistive types and capacitive types. We are not interested into understanding its uh, working, working part of it. What we have is now uh, understanding that if it is a strain gauge system, which is I know that this is, this is falling under static, um, static systems because the output R is not changing with respect to time. Whereas this changes with respect uh, by input L and input A. If there is change in the length or change in the cross sectional area, the output resistance R is going to change. All right. So, of course, in these cases, what we have is the model available, means input output relationship was available. But in certain cases, certain uh, systems, getting this input output relationship is not easy or coming up with the differential equations in case of the dynamical systems is not easy. So in that case, what we will consider is learning the systems with the help of the uh, set of inputs given and corresponding changes in the cells, the output. For example, in the static case, for example, I know that uh, for the strain gauge system, strain gauge uh, example, that it depends upon inputs L and A, but the exact relationship or the mapping from input output mapping is not available. So I want to understand what should be this particular function F look like. So then what I will do is um, I will take uh, multiple measurements depending upon uh, I will consider L and A as inputs and I will consider getting the output R recorded. So I will consider different measurements taken and corresponding the output values being recorded. 
but I can do this if it's very easy to understand if I have only one input and one output, uh, one, one input and one output. So for example, I have only one input and one output system and let's assume that cross-sectional area A remains constant all the time and for the strain gauge, we have only one input L and output R to be considered. So when I plot the L versus R curve, this could be linear or non-linear. Linear means I will get a, some kind of a straight line. For different values of L, I can plot this, what should be the value of R. And then try mapping the, uh, try getting, fitting it as a straight line, then it's a linear relationship. It could be possible that it is, uh, uh, for example, the fifth point turns out to be somewhere here. So I would like to, I, I know that there is some non-linearity in the relationship between R and L exists. So then what I will do is I will consider saying that R is some function of um, maybe a polynomial of L. So then I will consider fitting a um, uh, polynomial L, L a n minus 1, L power of n minus 1 plus a power of n minus 2, L power of n minus 2 plus a naught L power of naught. Okay, fine. So this polynomial fit is more or less like an optimization problem. Uh, we, we, we would be able to solve it. But what if it is not a polynomial form? For example, here our our coefficient a n was, was actually we knew that uh, this, this relationship is L by R, right? So this coefficient is further um, function of say F2 of A, some other parameter A, some other input A, all right? So then we, it's nothing but a neural network that we are trying to solve, right? So coefficient itself is also um, instead of a constant coefficient, it is actually um, another function of uh, the inputs and so on. Fair enough. Now, coming up with uh, the differential equations form, which, which solves the dynamical um, case. Dynamical systems, we describe our state as x dot equals ax plus bu and y is equal to cx. And in case of the, um, the pendulum equations, we have theta dot equals g by L sine theta. So what I'm considering here as the state of the system as theta, sorry, theta double on, theta and theta dot, then I'll be able to represent this particular system in this particular form, all right? So my x is a, a, a two-dimensional, and the state is given by theta and theta dot. All right. Even though, if, even when I say this, I have said I know that this is not a linear relationship anymore. So what I am saying here is that the relationship is some non-linear in terms of x and u. And at the same time, this particular change in the state is captured with the help of this differential equation or non-linear state form. So this we have been doing it considering the state space, state space realization for describing a process or a system. And this process has multiple inputs, can have multiple inputs and can have multiple outputs, multiple measurements coming up. These measurements could be directly uh, related to output or, or maybe some combination of outputs. At the same time, the system is also being uh, uh, being under the dis certain disturbances. So in case of the learning, learning framework, we will consider this system is acting under an environment here. So this environment is to be modeled in some cases or maybe what, what should be my output of the environment is to be, be controlled. What is the output of this environment? are the set of observations and input to the environment is action. This action is directly or not directly or indirectly related to inputs may or may not be, right? So that is something we will look into 
it. Here it is important to understand the terminology that is being used between learning and control. When we say state in terms of the system state, uh, it is the state of this particular process. Whereas when we consider in terms of the learning language, ML language and we describe a state, the state is for this entire environment that is something we have to understand. So the entire um, importance is, is being given when we, when we formulate a problem in terms of the uh, ML method and that too having a control objective that is something we will look into it is to say what are my observations and what are my actions. All right. Then we should be able to come up with whether it is the entire actions uh, observation action pair to be uh, to be considered into a database or if I have some some training data available then can I come up with a policy as in the reinforcement learning uh, methods. All right. If I have to control, if I will consider this control of non random whether it is a control or not that we will see. But at the same time the learning based framework for the non dynamical system for which the model is not known, model is not available. So what we can look forward is to identify this model which is finding the input output relationship. So for example, I have this particular input and this output or a set of inputs as in case of the strain gauge L and A and R. Of course, those, those relationships are already available. Uh, but if that relationship is not available, then what we will do? We will collect the data and corresponding R values. That is a straightforward. So in case of the strain gauge example, we have input length L and cross sectional area A, whereas the output is resistance R. And we are interested in getting this particular relationship F uh, which is the mapping from input to output. Are we interested in controlling this model? May not be because if I have this particular system described by input and output um, and this relationship is available then I will change this input in order to get a desired output over here. That is the control problem. I should be able to control the output of the output of the system. If I want to do it in the con context of the sensors at max what would I like to do is to get um, some controller which is an open loop perhaps and say okay I want to consider matching this particular output. So if this since the relationship is not is already known which is R equals L by A. I will have a controller which is just the inverse of it which is A by L so that what is my desired I R can be achieved at the output R. That is all could be a control problem for a non-dynamical systems form. But that is actually not a control part it is just an uh, okay, uh, unit change or, or whatever you want to consider it in this case. All right. So control of dynamical systems which is very interesting to look at from the learning concept point of view. We can consider having two approaches where we do not have, uh, so we, we are mainly applying the dynamical systems uh, under the learning framework when uh, the model is unavailable, when the, when the um, uh, input output relationship is not available to me. So what we can consider these two approaches as? First, first is we will learn the model and then design the controller. In which case we will consider um, describing this particular process under an environment and then we will consider that okay, we will consider some observation set and an action set, we will learn this and then okay, uh, once the process model is available, the, then we will design a controller and which is giving the input to the system directly. This is one way. The second way is we will consider learning to control the system itself. In which case what we will consider that within the environment itself we can have a controller already existing 
and which is giving the input to the system. And so the observations and actions may or may, may, or may not consider the control parameters as a part of uh, these, uh, these sets. So there are other, so now we have two, two uh, uh, options, we, will, we can consider the system as the black box directly. So where my controller itself, this is my uh, controller, whether it is a controller sitting here or not is uh, the second option rather. The first is we will consider that okay, uh, my actions are that I am giving over here are to certain extent taking care of the control objective in the absence of this controller. So to certain extent my learning method which is sitting here which is taking the observations and the, and the actions being given is acting as the controller directly. So we do not have this controller but this controller is my learning based controller. So what we are doing in this case is we are, we are, we are making sure that my ML algorithm is coming, with, coming up with some kind of uh, method which is acting like a controller, alright. The second is that we will assume the form of a controller and learn to tune it. In this case, I will consider that there is a controller sitting here and which is giving an input to the system, input to my, uh, my system or a process or a plant here. So then I will consider the form of the controller, for example, PID controller and its gains are given by KP, KI and KD. So my action commands are such that this is being given as the, um, the for a particular state of the environment, the actions are being, um, by, actions are being conveyed through the ML algorithm or the database which is, which is, uh, which is describing what should be the KP, KI and KD for that state. So this is where we will consider that uh, we can we can also call it as that the ML algorithm is giving the is is uh, is its objective is to tune the KPKI and KD values. So it is not necessary that my system or a process should be linear system, but for a particular state which has evolved from an initial state should have a particular gain values. So this KPKI KD will again be functions of time t. So every instance we will have the, uh, the value depending upon a state of the system, the KP, KI, KD value could be changing. And then we would be able to even address nonlinear systems or highly nonlinear systems in this case. So these are the advantages that we can explore by adding by giving the learning framework to the control objectives. Next video we will look into designing a database entries for tuning the KPKI KD values. See you.